Hello everyone, I must welcome you all to the webinar series Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Inside and this is your host Kalyani for this series. So today our topic is how to build a career in general management and in this webinar we will be talking about some of the key points such as the career progression in general management, career journey of the speaker and how an MBA played a role, uh, growth opportunities in this field, what is it like to be part of TAS, uh, how to become a task manager, key skills to excel, and more. So let's welcome our speaker today. We have uh, Harshit Jain. He is a task manager working at Titan as a product manager. Harshit is an alumnus of XLRI Jamshedpur. His undergraduate degree is from Pitts Pilani, and he worked as a software engineer before choosing to pursue an MBA and building a career in general management. Welcome, Harshit Jain, and thank you so much for being here today for this session. Thank you, Kalani, for having me here. It's always been a pleasure to be on this panel. Yeah, <laughs> great. Okay, yeah, so let's start from the beginning. So let's talk about your uh, career journey uh, briefly from Bits Pilani to what made you decide to go for um, uh, MBA after having a software engineer. And you were already working as a software engineer, right, uh, before going for an MBA. So uh, what made you go for an MBA and then um, you're becoming a task manager? Yeah, so let's talk. Uh, uh, let's take us through the whole thing. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. Kalani already covered the basics. That yes. yeah, after uh, my computer science degree from BITS, I decided to work as a software engineer. Mm. Uh, and I worked there for two years, <laughs> approximately two years. But um, <clears throat> after two years, I, in fact, after the first year, I kind of felt that I like software engineering more as a hobby. Okay. And not as a job. Okay. Hmm. Right. And sometimes making your hobby your job can, you know, lead to your hobby being uh, you hating your hobby. And I decided that maybe my skills lie elsewhere. Okay. I've always had a soft spot for, you know, uh, managing stuff, uh, events, communications, all that, all that jazz. So I decided maybe an MBA would be the better use of my skills. That would also, you know, give me more of an opportunity to actually decide on why I was doing what I was doing instead okay. of, you know, that stuff being predecided for me and me just being the executor of it. Okay. So during, after my first year, I decided to uh, go ahead for the MBA and spend the next year just preparing and writing my uh, exam. And that led me to XLRI. Uh, yeah, that was before XLRI. After XLRI, yeah. I've been a task manager, done general management. And now I'm basically currently in the marketing role. Yeah, okay. Sense. Yeah, so let's talk about your, uh, from, uh, in general management. So if you can just take us through how general management function is different from the other functions, uh, as in, since in general management and, and also uh, where, what all you do in general management, as in mm -hmm. you have to, uh, for how long you have to be in one function, each function uh, in a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you just take us okay. through that? Yeah. Sure. So general management, as the name implies, mm -hmm. is makes you a bit more of a generalist. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole thing of general management. You have to be somewhat good at everything mm -hmm. and maybe uh, take, you know, one aspect of whatever you like from all the functions and be a master. Mm -hmm. So okay. in, you know, our lingo, we would call it a very T-shaped knowledge path. Okay. Uh, because the T represents something like this, mm. where the, this T, this, it represents a knowledge across a wide depth of functions, but the vertical thing represents the depth in that specific one function that you like. Okay. Right. So the first thing about general management is that it gives you an opportunity to, you know, really explore what function you like, because what happens is an MBA, many people come into your uh, degree with preconceptions. Okay. That maybe. I will, I will do marketing or I will do finance or I will do uh, consulting or I will just choose one specific function and like, you know, just commit to that. Yeah. General management is basically for those commitment phobes that don't know how to commit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. right. Okay. That gives you a bit more of an opportunity to, you know, actually get into the uh, field and finally understand, okay, yes, maybe this is something that floats my boat. So, okay. for example, in TAS, you have four different stints across four different companies, three of them being business stints, one a community stint. Mm -hmm. uh, that is if you choose the BM track, the business management track. 
if you're in HR, you can always choose the HR track as well. But uh, business management gives you three different stints in three different uh, business verticals. So you get to explore, say, marketing at a lifestyle company or ops at a, a plant that is being set up or a plant that exists, or you can have a PM at a digital first company. And you get to do all this in one year. So that gives you yeah. the chance of, you know, exploring what function do you like in terms of general management. Okay. And from there, you can then decide that, yes, this is sort of the career track that I want to pursue. In my case, I decided on a dual category slash product slash brand management role, okay. which I feel, you know, might, you know, I, I can take forward. Okay. Now in general management, what happens is there's no particular, uh, you're not obligated to be in a certain uh, role or certain function forever, mm -hmm. but you're also not obligated to leave that function and you know do something different. It's entirely up to you uh, if you want to stay in that uh, function or if you want to change function mm -hmm. uh, within reason. What if you are really good at finance, but then do you, would you still suggest um, general management for those people if they are really good at one field? Yeah, I mean, what would be your suggestion okay. for those people? So, if you're really good at finance and if you know mm -hmm. finance is your mm -hmm. calling, then I think, uh, you know, maybe a core finance role might be something that suits you. That is That, that would be more ideal. Now, I'm not mm -hmm. saying general management is not necessarily for those people because okay. in there also, you will ha also have finance roles. You'll also get roles where you have to do a lot of m &A, where you have to do... Uh, corporate banking, uh, corporate finance, right? Okay. You will have roles like that. Okay. But it just okay. makes more sense to, you know, get into the core nitty gritties first. A general management degree just uh, makes it easier mm -hmm. for you to also look at different functions if you also want to look at different functions. Okay. So when uh, somebody is coming to Ohio at the <clears throat> campus, mm -hmm. uh, are they coming specifically for general management? Is that mm -hmm. how it is? So they'll specifically have like, it, you know, it's like a separate interview, separate, like how in consulting and all that, and obviously certain hiring, uh, certain companies are coming to hire. So for general management, is it very specific? Or is it like almost everybody is sitting for all the interviews or they are hiring from all the uh, different functions? How is it? Uh, this is during the uh, campus placement. So. I'm just, uh, yeah. So during a campus placement, right? From uh -huh. the organization side of hmm. things Correct. right uh the company will come uh they will say that they're a general management role because usually how it happens is they hire for a it's a program hmm. uh, for example um tata has their task program yeah yeah right? I'll, I'll get yeah i'll come back uh, I'll uh, aditya birla hmm. has their own empty program okay. capgemini elite also has a capgemini elite is also a general management program from the capgemini side of things okay. although that has a more tech related focus then you also have a reliance and other conglomerates that okay. also have their uh, general management program. Now, okay. what happens is that when they hire you, they are not particularly looking out for uh, excellence in one specific function. They are looking for a much more well-rounded uh, approach okay. in terms of saying, ki, okay, this person has the ability to do X, Y, Z, right? They have the soft skills. They may well have the hard skills, but in an interview, you can't particularly judge hard skills to the extent that it might be required in a job, okay. right? But okay. an interview can gauge how much you may know, but it may not tell you accurately. So okay. with a general management uh, role, they're looking for very well-rounded people uh, okay. when they're hiring somebody. Okay. Now, uh, from the from our side of things, which is okay. the student side of things, everybody applies to general management. Okay. Everybody applies. Okay. I don't think there's anybody who doesn't. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. It's, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So, so can you tell us uh, something about you know how to build that kind of a profile which might help them uh, help the candidate to get selected for a particular uh, uh, general management uh, you know uh, job role? Hmm. Uh, hmm. The kind of profile and and also the kind of any tips for uh, okay. our uh, yeah because our aspirants are also uh, the ones you know have taken our attendees are from CAT 23 
uh, who are now sitting for GDPI and all that. And so soon they will be getting into a B school. And of course, yeah. we also have a CAT 24 uh, students who are attending. So of yeah, course. so for both groups, if you have uh, tips for profile. So I talked about the well-rounded aspect mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. my previous question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the most important thing is to have multiple uh, in consulting they talk about spikes okay uh, in your cv spikes mm -hmm. are basically pointers or points that uh, make your profile stand out in different ways so you can okay. there is something that you know there'll be a cv point that you won some national award or mm -hmm. you won some case competition on a national level basis that is what is called a spike okay. right or that uh, you uh, in your job, you stood out uh, with, you know, you won an award for best rookie of the year or you won an award for the most innovative employer, or whatever. That's also a spike, mm -hmm. okay. right? Mm -hmm. So definitely spikes are important. But what's really more important for general manager is spikes uh, and uh, in a different, in multiple different aspects. Okay. So something in your academics, something in your job, something outside of your job, right something as a co-curricular activity all all of that if you can create your cv to have spikes in that mm -hmm. and overall have a very general high level of uh spread in your mm -hmm. cv across different okay. aspects that okay. makes a pretty well-rounded general management profile okay. uh unlike say for going for a core marketing role where mm -hmm. if you overload your cv on marketing mm -hmm. that is much more helpful you don't okay. really need, you may not need to focus on extracurriculars or your previous job experience much. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, the previous job experience for most marketing roles is irrelevant. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. In this case, previous mark, previous job roles may help in your uh, journey, but that's not the, that's not necessarily the case because general management also hires freshers as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's talk about then um, TAS. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, as a TAS manager, uh, first, if you can tell us about you as in, you know, how exactly it happened for you and mm -hmm. what is exactly the process uh, within uh, while you're doing the MBA and, uh, you know, the whole TAS uh, process. Can you just tell us what's the process? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. So during my year, um, TAS came for laterals, uh, lateral placement process that happens in okay. the okay. institute. Now, there are two placement processes that happen. There is one mm -hmm. which is a lateral, mm -hmm. which is for uh, people with work experience. Okay. And there's a certain cutoff assigned to your work experience. Key, you must have this much work experience, and then you are eligible for that process. Okay. Then the other is the normal uh, combined placement process or the finals, which okay. is basically for everyone who... Mm -hmm. Who maybe did not take part in the laterals or are looking forward to other companies not that did not come in the laterals or freshmen okay right. mm -hmm. so that is the, uh, the those are two for our time it came in laterals mm -hmm. and the process was that uh TAS always has an application form that you have to fill out okay uh, they will ask your entire uh, bio data mm -hmm. uh, and they will ask you to but the most important part of that application form is that you have to fill up a set of behavioral questions. Okay. I think it's about six or seven behavioral questions mm -hmm. that cover different aspects of your personality, different mm -hmm. aspects of what uh, you felt you stood out in certain situations and how you tackled certain situations. Okay. And that is <clears throat> what is uh, really important for the process. Okay. Apart from that, uh, after filling out that form, you also have to take a behavioral uh, behavioral assessment. Okay. Right. So it's a gamified assessment process where you know there's a mobile app. Uh, they, you access it. You click a link. It will take mm -hmm. you to that app, and in that app there'll be certain games okay. that you have to play. Right. Mm -hmm. The thing is, those games are designed in such a way that they do the psychometric analysis in the back end or okay. they do whatever uh, the basic IQ analysis that they have to do. So recognition mm -hmm. of patterns, uh, how fast you can comprehend things, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, once uh, once you, if you clear both of those uh, mm -hmm. hurdles, then you get to the 
chairman's gd okay. uh, at least for tax i don't know how mm-hmm. it works for aditya bedla or reliance okay mm-hmm. right but in tax you have the chairman gd which uh, in a panel of 8 uh, everybody has there will be eight separate gds essentially okay. right five to seven minute gds mm-hmm. in which every person has to act as a chairman in, in one of their gds okay. and based on the topic that they given Okay. once you clear the chairman gds uh, then you have the presentation round uh, in our case the presentation round was uh, so during an internship if you if you mm-hmm. went into task one internship mm-hmm. uh, i actually don't know what the presentation round for that was okay. because what happens is after the internship when you have your ppi then you mm-hmm. have to present what you did in the summer internship okay right but uh, in our case in lactels we also presented what we did in our respective summer internships mm-hmm. uh, when we did it in our summer uh, and we had to basically compile it into a 15 to 20 minute ppt mm-hmm. just summarizing and saying ki okay this is th- this was what we need to do this was what we did this is what okay. we achieved mm-hmm. and any questions and answers that may come from that okay. and after if you clear that as well then you finally have the final interview mm-hmm. which will be held with three or four panelists which are most lead directors and uh, c suite executives in within from different tata companies okay okay so that is also a 20 to 25 to 30 minute interview mm-hmm. and that covers uh, various uh, topics they can ask okay. anything all has to speak kuch bhi puch sakte hai so okay. <laughs> you have to be really on the ball of your feet and uh, uh-huh. in my case i was horrible at finance and from <laughs> one of the directors he got really involved into the financial aspect uh, and i'm like please okay. stop <laughs> okay uh, he wouldn't <laughs> so yeah yeah so that is uh, the overall general process mm-hmm. for getting into tas okay. and that's how i did it so in mm-hmm. our case tas was one of the first companies to come into laterals okay uh and uh, honestly i was looking i was actually going for pm roles Uh, product okay. management mm-hmm. microsoft amazon mm-hmm. all the things so what serendipity was there that i got into tas so mm-hmm. it's a, it's been an interesting journey since then correct okay okay uh, there is something now for uh, in in tas now uh, obviously you know you were from excel by jamshedpur so what about uh, from in somebody who was in a tier 2 b school or tier 3 b mm-hmm. school how uh, can they get into tas how can they become task manager is it possible um it depends i mean it other depends. than the campus other yes. than the b school so is there it, any other way yeah around? so if you are in a tier 2 b school and mm-hmm. task does not come to your campus for mm-hmm. uh, placements directly mm-hmm. there is usually something called the tata imagination challenge okay i believe that is what it's called tic mm-hmm. huh mm-hmm. you can always check on the website yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so there is usually a uh case competition from the tatas that you can uh, go through okay. and the prize for you know getting first place in that is getting a ppi for tas okay mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. okay uh, so that is one opportunity secondly apart from mbas right if you're mm-hmm. already say you're already part of a tata company and you've been working there okay. for a certain amount of years a certain amount of consecutive years there's there's some conditions that are applied mm-hmm. right and basis that if you have already if you fulfill those criteria you can apply for the in house tas program okay right okay. Mm-hmm. you can apply for the in house tas program which will also give you an opportunity to you know uh join the tas program without doing an mba okay mm-hmm. and thirdly apart from tas uh, various tata companies also have their mt programs okay right so for example tata titan itself has their mt program and they do hire from multiple uh, tier 2 institutes like they are mica or a mm. imt or a nm okay. or a scs mm. scs which are so okay. titan directly goes there and it this is basic titan mt program is basically a small scale task program it's it covers variety of domains variety of functions all okay. across the ecosystem tcs does the same uh, other companies also have the tata steel will also have an empty program okay so that is also there as mm-hmm. a alternate to uh, the task uh, general management thing okay 
Okay. But yes, if you want to join that task, those are the other two opportunities if the company does not come to your campus. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was a question about, you know, since yes. you were talking about, uh, you know, um, the, like, you know, you need to have a uh, profile that is, you know, all around the sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So in case someone doesn't have the spread right now, what can be done? I am an incoming MBA 24, 26 student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do they do now? Yeah, what will they do now? Hmm. But uh, like, uh, you know, if they're already in the uh, B honestly, school. Honestly, at, yeah. at, at, at today, if you're not in the B school right now, hmm. right, if you're going to be joining B school in say... Incoming MBA 24, In three months yeah, or so, yeah. hmm. don't do anything. Just chill. Okay. Okay. relax. <laughs> there bought, bought time. Hai. Okay. <laughs> I, I I did I did jack I did nothing during the three months after I got my Excel ad admit. Okay. I okay. just chilled. I just enjoyed. I just spent a lot of money going to random pubs, and <laughs> yet here I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, after all that, you know, after all the tests, you you already <laughs> you already worked hard. Just relax for a bit. You need yeah. you uh, believe me. You need that uh, energy and you need that well rested just yeah. for the okay. next three months that are about to come after you join yes. the MBA. Mm, right. Okay. But and, and, on a, uh, yeah, yeah. On a more serious note, uh, <laughs> after you join an MBA, hmm. um, just look out. Just be on the lookout for opportunities. Honestly, like, okay. just, first of all, academics is always a good thing to focus hmm. on. Hmm. Right. Some people have the view that academics may not help. Some people have the view that academics are the only thing that helps. Hmm. The answer, like always, lies somewhere in the middle. Hmm. Academics help, but uh. The, you should always be on the lookout for other opportunities that come your way, right? Mm. So maybe being part of clubs, committees, yeah, correct, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if if you are so inclined, NGOs and social service may also also mm. help, right? Okay. I didn't do it, but it mm. can help, okay. right? Uh, mm. Case competitions, different type of case competitions, mm. some case competitions that are in your zone, some case okay. competitions that are outside your comfort zone mm. to all of them, see what you get. And overall, the profile builds itself. Mm. Okay. It always, it almost always builds itself. So don't stress on it too much. Just play one ball at a time and just keep on mm. looking out for opportunities. Okay, tell me, uh, now, you know, you've had, uh, you were, you know, after your undergraduation, you worked and then uh, you yeah. went for an MBA, then you were planning to go for product management, but then, yeah, TAS happened and then general management happened. Mm. So, uh, what are you, uh, do you have any uh, learnings from this journey as in things that you would have liked to do differently now if you look back or the things that you did right and it really worked out for you? You know, when you sent me those questions, this was still the toughest question. Yeah. In yes. I'm like, what would I do differently? Yeah. Right. Because yeah. honestly, think, I don't think I would have done much differently. Right. Because mm. to do something differently, you have to do some things consciously. And I don't think I really uh, put in like a very conscious planned effort towards what I did. I kind okay. of went with the flow and mm. I got into uh, tasks on a in a very go with the flow way, right? So to do things differently, that's a very tough question to answer. Mm. Uh, but the entire going with the flow, figuring out opportunities has to come is the one thing I felt that I did right, right? Yeah. Mm. Because that didn't let me be pigeonholed into a certain, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't basically let myself get pigeonholed. Mm. So if you really want to do tasks or general management, yeah, don't let yourself get pigeonholed, and I think you'll be fine. Mm, right, okay. Yeah, uh, you said something about the spikes in CV, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, if a person doesn't have any national level certification or anything in their CV, so any hint that helps? Yeah, I don't have It's okay, it's, you don't worry about mm -hmm. it. Okay. You have, as I said, you have one and a half years uh, mm -hmm. in MBA. To build spikes and the spikes that you build during an MBA hmm. are hundred percent more useful than uh, any other uh, previous spikes that you may had. I know there are people who've done um, what do you call? They got they were, uh, were national. They did the Olympiads or they did some sort of 
competition or they were some national level dancer or uh, some ranji level cricket player whatever right mm-hmm. and that's obviously very helpful but not everyone will have that and uh, just focusing on what you do in your mba that also is a worthwhile uh, way to go okay Okay, uh, what is the progression in general management function and for mm-hmm. how long you have to be in each function while you're, uh, while, so if you were more inclined towards product management, but when you were stuck in something else, some other function, uh, how do you uh, yeah, navigate those? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. How, it, uh, how it works, at least yeah. mm-hmm. uh, task, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, I can't comment for other conglomerates. Mm-hmm. But with TAS, how it generally works is that uh, after you join, you mm-hmm. have four stints mm-hmm. across the year, across the first year, mm-hmm. uh, across 11 months. So mm-hmm. three stints of three months each, one stint of two months. And the two month stint is a community stint. So it's more of a yeah. uh, CSR slash social uh, type of stint. The other three business stints, they give you different uh, functions across different domains in different companies. Mm-hmm. Right. So suppose that you really want to go into operations. Right. Mm -hmm. You can somewhat work with the HR to, you know, figure out when you can do a stint within uh, an HR, an ops based company uh, with an ops based role. That also really depends on what company uh, decides to open up or decides to apply for the, so every quarter task will basically release its stint based programs, mm-hmm. right? We, we want to, we invite company to, you know, give out JDs for that, mm-hmm. right? Now, uh, when, when that happens, you can work with the HR, you can get probably diff- that kind of role and see if you like it or not. Mm-hmm. And, once, and once that is done, at the end of the year, there's also like a, placement process okay. that happens so companies will uh, once again submit jds or submit job openings to the task hr who mm-hmm. will then circulate it to us and then we can submit our, our what do you call wish list or mm-hmm. priority list and then we can have interviews arranged with that company okay, okay. so Honestly, uh, getting stuck into the wrong role after the first year is mm-hmm. difficult. It's not, uh, it it's not easy to get stuck with a role because you kind of get to choose what you want to do. Okay. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to an extent, obviously, interview processes mm-hmm. are there, but you get to choose, mm-hmm. and basis that then your career progression can go on from there. Uh, okay. What happens is after you join a role, you become mm-hmm. part of that uh, company. Okay. Right. You are on that company's payroll. Mm-hmm. Although you always have contact with the TAS HR for any new opportunities that might be okay. on the uh, that might be opened up. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But for all intents and purposes, you are a part of the other company, the company that you joined, mm-hmm. and your career progression takes the root of how it goes within that company. Okay. So, uh, so how exactly from entry level to senior level, how does it work in general management? So, so in a company, a, yeah. In, so for example, uh, mm-hmm. a Tata Steel might have a different career progression from a Titan, which mm-hmm. might have a different career progression from say a Tata Digital, which might have something different from Air India. So okay. it's honestly very hard to say ki, what is the career progression uh, okay. overall. But mm-hmm. usually what you can expect is uh, after 10 to 15 years, mm-hmm. you can definitely be at a, like a, for, for example, a GM or a, definitely a director level role. That okay. is what you should definitely be aiming for. Mm, okay. right. C-suit okay. executive might be too mm-hmm. fast for yeah. Tata's, okay. right? But uh, again, if you it depends. It all depends on how well you perform uh, and what the company that you're in, what is their speed of progression as well. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. So, uh, can you tell us uh, something about uh, like your typical day at uh, Titan, like? Uh, yeah, a typical day. So from morning. A typical day at yeah. Titan. And and what's the work life balance like? Right. So mm-hmm. honestly, a typical day at Titan, there is no typical day. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. all the very dynamic. Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, 
the role that I am in, it involves two different uh, aspects. One is the branding marketing aspect of it. One is the mm -hmm. managing the product portfolio, the brand. So mm -hmm. I have to constantly be in switch within uh, two different mindsets mm -hmm. because uh, product portfolio management, that's a more long-term thought process. You have to think maybe a year or two years, three years ahead on where you see the product portfolio and even longer when you see how this will affect the brand. So that okay. is one sort of mentality. Marketing okay. and comms, on the other hand, that is a very, where is the campaign going live tomorrow? Where is, mm -hmm. what is my next month's campaign? Mm -hmm. That kind of mentality. So it's very immediate short term. So switch, you have to switch constantly, switch between those two mentalities. Okay. Uh, the role involves, it's an individual contributor role. Mm -hmm. Right. So it involves a lot of stakeholder management, right? Uh, ability to lead without influence, um, mm -hmm. all those terms. Uh, but basically, you have to coordinate with the retail operation, you have to coordinate with your new product development, you have to coordinate with various external agencies okay. uh, to, you know, ensure everything happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are, the of, uh, what are the kind of, what are the kind of skill sets? Uh, also, skill sets? You also skill sets huh yeah. so skill sets soft skills for sure right mm. you should be able to tweet talk your way to whatever you need to do okay right? so be a sweet talker okay one yeah. <laughs> that probably helps in many other things <laughs> too yeah. yeah it does it does the problem is i'm horrible at it so i have to figure yeah. my way out around that. <laughs> okay right. so soft skills okay yeah so can you tell us uh one is of course you know to, yeah be effective communicator let's say um, that as in, uh, sure Sure. So yeah. first, so basically, um, understanding you know what your uh the person you're working with, what are they looking for, and trying to ensure that you know everyone strikes everything strikes a happy balance. Okay. Uh, because you're not going to get what you want; they're not going to get what they want fully. Mm -hmm. So it's better to you know get come meet somewhere in the middle. That mm -hmm. is kind of one kind of thing. Another okay. thing is uh, ability to empathize and understand, okay. right? Because mm -hmm. you need to empathize with what everyone else is also, because they everyone has their own goals and their own objectives. So ability to empathize also helps you understand what the what uh, every stakeholder is looking for, okay. and therefore how you can operate within that bounds accordingly, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Maybe presentation skills for sure, because mm -hmm. this role involves a lot of presentations. Okay. Right. So that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, uh, hard skills. Yeah. Hard skills. Yeah. You mm -hmm. also mentioned that as well. <laughs> Making presentations. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Making presentations for sure. That is a definite hard skill. How much data is, uh, how much uh, data analytics is necessary in, in general management? Is it like as much as in finance or in management consulting, like you to, uh, you know, work with numbers you know, and then- like, in, like finance, probably hmm. not. Okay. But it's probably 70% of the way. Okay. okay. Right. You still have to manage data. Like I get uh, sales data numbers, I get- hmm. uh, grant track numbers i have to still analyze and understand what's going on there right mm -hmm. so that also requires a lot of excel work that requires okay. a lot of so dashboarding you need excel and okay uh excel skills hard skills uh, excel powerpoints skills, and everything PowerPoint. yeah. i've already said presentation mm -hmm. powerpoint skills presentation. okay right. and uh, um, how much uh understanding and knowledge of data analytics how much uh, understanding and all your data? Honestly, data analytics, if you know it, that's great. Mm -hmm. But you usually have, at least in our case, we have dedicated data analytics teams that do that job. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's more about how you uh, brief them and guide them towards what you're looking for. Okay. Right? Um, mm -hmm. So data management, uh, data analytics skills, that's there. Um, in my role, event management skills is definitely a plus. Okay. okay. Right. So managing, uh, hosting, managing, and executing big uh, events, hmm. you know, these may involve, because that will also involve multiple agencies, venues, hmm. uh, celebrities, guest lists, hmm. uh, store staff, okay. uh, other staff, whatever. Hmm. So ensuring everything keeps on going, uh, keeps okay. on moving, and everything keeps on working, that's a big plus. So that can also help. 
but yeah. in that that's more for my role for general mm-hmm. management uh, date your data excel skills powerpoint skills mm-hmm. uh, those help okay and tell me in uh, as far as uh, general management is concerned how much of it uh, also involves um, problem solving and all that because it sounds like very more uh, managerial work than like you know how it would be say as a consultant or a analytics person and all that so so honestly speaking every role outside of uh, uh out of mba in, in quite problem solving that's why i didn't really mention it mm, okay. because it's really a hygiene right okay. mm, mm, it's a given okay. i also so even even in my case the problem solving would revolve, would, would revolve more around you know brand strategy okay. we what are we looking forward to do as uh, with the brand what is mm-hmm. our objective what is our thought behind where we want to take it the brand proposition which kind of customer we want to target how do we target them what is the strategy mm-hmm. we devise for that mm-hmm. uh within a certain budget how do we balance or how do we prioritize activity that's all problem solving right okay so that is all there so i mm-hmm. didn't really mention it because i it's mm-hmm. it's a given both of hey but apart from that then uh, this also involves a lot of stakeholder management which so is more me, managing uh, to me overall in any company not just a titan overall hmm. as a general management uh, person in any company uh, they, so it's it's by rule that they have to work in different functions or all the functions in, in at one time or the another or initially the initially, okay, uh, initially the first year the first year okay, okay. after that once you join a you given company choose. you get to choose ki how your career progression is you can there are people who have joined one company at the start of their task and Mm-hmm. I've been in that company till the end of the task. Okay. Right. So for thirty years I've been in the same company. That's mm-hmm. uh, that's also yeah. there. Right. Mm-hmm. There are people who have had long, uh, long, uh, long years in a certain company, and then they switch mm-hmm. to another company mm-hmm. altogether. So okay. switching from say uh, automotive to aviation, people have done that as well. Okay. Right, or switching from finance to aviation, it's mm-hmm. been done. It's okay. not, uh, it's not a no, but uh, it all depends on what you want to do. Okay, um, can you tell us a challenging situation that you have had in this role, and how did you find a solution? I feel like I'm in an interview process all over. Again. <laughs> Why are yeah. you doing this to me? I thought I thought this was all past it. Yeah, yeah. Behavioral question, so it's not for you know how you know how long we take to think of answers to the behavioral questions. It takes. Uh, well, it the takes thing a, is, um, our uh, attendees would like to know what all yeah, is yeah. there for them. No, no. So every day is a challenge, but yeah. um, I'm just trying to figure out how to make it very generalized and mm-hmm. you know make it. Uh, Maybe with an example, no examples. Yeah, examples, examples is also wrong. I'm just trying to obfuscate mm-hmm. details just to make it a more. Mm-hmm. but um for example uh a challenge was basically how to you know as i talked about event management right mm-hmm. so the major challenge really was how to get the event to go off without a hitch because this mm-hmm. would be a very big event involving a lot of money mm-hmm. uh, being spent on it and involving both your own senior management and uh, very very big celebrities uh that would be attending the event as a chief yes mm-hmm. so that uh was honestly quite a challenging bit because mm-hmm. first figuring out why you need to do the event what is even the point of doing an event right mm-hmm. because you're going to invite say 100 people yeah you can't have them be bored in the event so yeah. figuring mm-hmm. all that out coordinating with so many different agencies and what happens is every time there's an agent uh everybody everybody will for the delay aata hi hai everywhere mm-hmm. there's a delay mm-hmm. and the thing is already operating on very tight timelines so delay you're like why is this happening to me mm-hmm. why always me right <laughs> so managing all those challenges honestly a lot of just keeping at the problem ensuring you know constant follow ups ensuring that everyone just keeps on to there's no rocket science solution to it because there never is right mm-hmm. I know in our behavioral questions we always make it seem like I did something so innovative mm-hmm. and so fancy to you know make it complete. Mm-hmm. 
or is the answer is a lot of phone calls a lot of shouting and a lot of pleading <laughs> to get okay. it done mm, okay. right that is that is how you solve a challenge okay <laughs> okay a very very honest answer yeah okay um yeah it, how uh, crucial is an mba for general management it helps okay. it definitely helps mm. right because it gives you uh, a network uh, okay. it, it develops your soft skills it develops that aspect of uh, getting things done in very quick time, okay. right? Which a non MBA person will have to develop in a different way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but in, in an MBA, it comes inherent with all what with all the case competitions and the assignments with mm -hmm. ridiculously uh, near deadlines. Mm -hmm. So that kind of develops itself, working in groups, working in teams. Uh, it helps. So developing all the soft skills and some hard skills that does a job, right? Okay. So a seven out of 10 for sure. Yeah, okay. seven out of 10, okay. Uh, there's a question, while preparing for uh, task placements, are uh, they looking for something particular from your past corporate experience? I'm asking because I have two years business analyst experience. Is that considered in placements? Yes, that is considered in placement. That is a very good experience and you'll be perfectly fine. Don't worry yeah. about it too much because uh, all you have to do is just ensure that whatever work you've done during those two years actually comes mm -hmm. out in your CV. Mm -hmm. And now that you'll be joining uh, your MBA course, mm -hmm. don't worry, your seniors will help you out uh, with, you know, getting that CV to shine. Mm -hmm. and that is usually their job. And M your MBA will help out. You'll figure out how to write a good CV mm -hmm. in no time. Okay. Uh, there's a very... Always a controversial question about what's the kind of uh, CTC that one can expect. <laughs> this has been a, a question that has been asked. So uh, if you could just give us like, of course, you know, you can always find all these answers on the placement report and all that of all the preschools. But if you can tell us like uh, if somebody is looking for, okay, I'm asking you again slightly different and uh, more you know holistic question if someone is uh, thinking okay i want a work life balance and but uh, and also i also want a good career um i am okay with uh, but i don't want to take so much of stress like you know in investment banking or like how it is basically 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 kalyani kaam bhi nahi karna hai samajh gaya main samajh gaya yeah, that is that is what uh, the question is asking. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. See. काम करना है लेकिन stress ज़्यादा stress नहीं है। मतलब ऐसा भी नहीं कि investment banking like you know you are literally working constantly like twenty four hours and all that. I know. Yeah. So somewhere where you always keep talking about a balance somewhere. So. So, <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sorry I derailed your uh, panel entirely. Please forgive me. Uh, but uh, it okay. It's a tough question to answer again because different companies have different work life balances, right? So in some cases, you might feel that uh, there's a certain amount of pain involved. I'm not going to get into numbers. Because uh, A, that's, I'm not sure people would appreciate me getting into numbers and B, I'm not uh, sure key what are the current numbers for a task graduate today, mm -hmm. right? I know my numbers and I don't feel mm -hmm. like that's uh, of course, the point yeah. of this conversation anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But uh, the thing is you get paid decently well, mm -hmm. right? It may not be the highest. It's definitely mm -hmm. not the lowest. It's somewhere in the middle, okay. right? Obviously, there's always a okay. I'm gonna go get a bit philosophical now, so <laughs> don't mind me. Yes, please. Right? There's all there's always obviously a, a race. I to see ki, oh, my batch is earning more than me. I'm not doing well, mm -hmm. or uh, my batch is earning less than me. I'm the best, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that is just a race towards killing your mental health because after yeah. a certain point of time, money is just numbers on a board, right? Yeah. Okay. Right, you have certain needs, you have certain wants, yes. those get fulfilled, money gets saved. What's the problem? Correct, right? 
Mm-hmm. So getting uh, if you get to get into that mindset helps, right? Uh, now general management, as I said, pays somewhere in the middle, so mm-hmm. you will uh, never see the highest salaries, but conversely, you also never see the highest amount of workload either, right? right? Okay. And the best thing with Tata's is job security. Yes. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a huge so thing. there's a certain amount of job security that comes from you know Tata is being much more uh, relaxed uh, or much more compassionate during mm-hmm. uh, periods of lower economic growth. Okay. Right. For example, last year when your know, Googles and Amazons and Microsofts were firing people left and center, mm-hmm. I was barely in. I I didn't even know there was a recession going on because hey, I'm my job is not in danger. Right. So, mm-hmm. That helps. Yeah. That but, helps, yes, a big, uh, big but again, there was a conversely converse point of view you're, you're supposed to be skilled enough to find another job, mm. so that's also there. But again, that all depends on what your mindset is. I yeah, have yeah. the former, so that's my mm. mindset, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. Before we wrap up, uh, tips for our CAT 24 students and tip for all the people you know who are getting into family schools this year, mm. yeah. so okay, so. Um, for people who are getting into B schools this year, mm. uh, we you will have your GDP. You should have studied mm. GDPIs, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. they would have yeah, started. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, just keep up with your GDPI prep. Keep up with current affairs. Keep up with uh, things that are going on. Mm. Keep on revising your uh, reason to believe your why, you know what you're doing. Mm. And once you get through, then don't do anything. You leave <laughs> the rest. Okay. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Once you get into an MBA, then uh, I think the people who are currently there, they can take over in a much better way than I ever can. Mm-hmm. For CAT, for those people who give the CAT this year, mocks help, mock tests help, uh, a bit of study every day. You don't have to put too much, uh, you don't have to commit to it like 10 hours a day. It's not IDJ, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's CAT, it's easier, mm-hmm. right? It's just more competitive. So okay. honestly, just one to two hours a day, right? That should be more than enough. Okay. Uh, if you start today, mm-hmm. right? Doing that, mm-hmm. focus on what you're weak at, uh, and ensure that what you're strong at keeps maintained. Don't neglect it just because you're weak at something. Because then what happens is you've forgotten all about it, and uh, then you realize, oh, my strength is now my weakness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You don't want that to happen. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah. But uh, self study, a balance of focus, and just getting uh, consistency in your, what you're doing that helps. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 12 and exactly one hour session. So uh, that's all the time we have for this session. Uh, thank you, all the attendees. And thank you, Ahashit, uh, for giving um, such thoughtful and <laughs> honest insights on general thank management. You. Thank you. Thank you, Kalyani. Thank you so much. 